Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with the uh, second episode of the three post-commentary videos I'll be doing for Battle Brothers. Um, so, this particular episode was, I would say, probably the main reason why I decided to do post-commentary on these rather than completely scrap them, because as you'll see later in the video, things are going to get crazy. So, uh, last time around we left off in Schnellen, and uh, I think we completed all of the work that was there for us, so I believe in this episode we're going to head to Lanzenberg. Um, we'd already stopped off there last episode, but we didn't really, um, you know, get a full feel for everything that was there. We just kind of peeked in the market before we uh, headed on through to collect our pay. So let's go ahead and start the video, and uh, again, as I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, I will be doing post commentary on this, not current commentary, because of the technical issues that I mentioned in the last video. So basically we take a peek at uh, anybody who might be available for hire in Schnellen, there's nobody there. So uh, right now I think I'm just discussing the plans moving forward and then um, just sort of recapping you know, what happened in the last episode. Basically we had been up in the Northwest and traveled very far South um, back to Schnellen and now we're gonna start moving East because we really have nowhere else to go. Uh, Schnellen is about as far south as that part of the map goes. But if we cut east, you know, we can hit the rest of Househorn's territories like Tiefenstad and then uh, Otterndorf and all those. So uh, we had two, three major injuries in that last episode. Um, Balder also got a permanently maimed foot. And so it looks like we're going to move some people around here to uh, sort of fill in for these injured guys. Arn is going to... Uh, I don't think he's going to get to see any combat immediately uh, because he's more of a, a second line guy. But I think later on in the video we're actually going to give um, Mieszko a break while he heals and throw Arn in his spot. Um, Hakon is, uh, again, a dastard, so he's going to be mostly reserved for us. But it's nice to have a couple of characters like that that we can keep in reserve without their morale dropping. So we don't you know, have to constantly worry about rotating people in and out. And then we have Alfred, the mauler, who's uh, not great, but, you know, in a pinch he can work in the front line, so that's exactly what we're going to do with him, is we're just going to kind of drop him in where uh, Balder was, hand him an axe and see what he can do. Um, as I'm mentioning here, I'm not about to give a new character our very expensive armor, though. So I think we end up throwing some chain mail on him, some regular chain mail. That or... Um, we may swap, yeah, Callie's gear, since Callie does not have the uh, reinforced hauberk. So we give that to Callie, and then uh, I think I think Alfred ends up getting his old suit of armor with the with the chainmail pauldrons on it. I think, yeah, I'm debating back and forth. I end up just giving him that because it's it's fairly replaceable. And then, of course, uh, we need to give him a kite shield and a hand axe, some bandages, and I think we give him some throwing axes as well. Yeah, I think we take them from Balder since he doesn't need them. Um, yeah, give him everybody bandages. And let's see, do I remember the throwing axes? I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, okay. I thought so. And with that, he's pretty much fully outfitted. He's not the best with throwing weapons, but even if one or two of them hit out of the four, it's still worth it. So we may as well, then we're going to go ahead and get everybody's skirmishing weapons equipped before we before we fight. And, uh, right, I'm taking all of their stupid, like, tunics and stuff off so I can sell them all before we uh, move forward. And I think before we leave, we'll go ahead and do that. Just so, you know, we have the most inventory space available as possible. Because, you know, we don't want to be walking around with extra armor and stuff that we don't need to have in our inventory. And then, for some reason, I'm looking again at these guys. Um, I think we do end up grabbing Hugo just because of how low his uh, hiring fee is. Hildebert um, also is very low, but you can see there his daily wage is pretty terrible. Hugo, on the other hand, is 9, which is... About as high as you'll see for somebody uh, at that tier. So we go ahead and grab him. And uh, it looks like he's got decent combat potential. Uh, he starts off pretty low though. And he's also a dastard. So somebody else that can 
sit on our uh, on our you know bench or whatever and uh, fill in where and when we need them. But otherwise, we don't have to worry about keeping them in combat. So it's kind of cool to get a couple guys like that because Balder, while he's done admirably in that role, um, is obviously getting slowed down more and more and more as as you know he continues to take these wounds. He's a survivor though, so he has a 90% chance of not being killed when he's down. And so, um, you know, I, I am really interested to see how his story is going to play out. I'll, I'll probably keep him on just because, again, he's content with being in reserve too. So there's really, like, no no reason not to keep him around other than just having to throw a little bit extra gold at him. But his, uh, his daily wages are fairly low anyway, so it's not that big a deal. And so we're off to Landsenberg. Um... Let's see, I believe there's an armor here. Yeah, but we don't have enough for the armor that we would like to purchase. They don't have any. Oh, they do have two. Okay. So they have two of them. Um, alternatively, we could also, you know, grab a very expensive bassinet helmet there. But that would be all of our money, so not exactly a great idea there. Uh, they've also got some basic male shirts, which I do not like the price of. And then I think we get lucky here. And actually find one that was a bit damaged for a lot, lot less. And then we are going to stock up on tools as well because that's a pretty good price. And yeah, right there at 308 Much, much cheaper than the 625 they wanted. We do have to, you know, patch it up a little bit, but it's not a big deal. It's always nice to have extra armors around as well. Um, good ones, that is. You know, the leather armor uh, is basically just the equivalent of like... I don't know. Just whatever we can keep our guys in when they're not fighting. And I think here we're going to pay for a little bit of news. I don't recall if we end up finding anything. Let's see. Um, ah, this one was interesting. So a bewildered patron told me he was held prisoner by some rogues in the step far from here. Said they had something real pretty with them. Some sort of curious looking weapon. But it's, it's real vague where it is so they say in the, in the step far from here where that is exactly you know is not clear at all um so there's several like step areas it could be where i'm gesturing to with the mouse right now or frankly it could be any one of those patches um they didn't give a, a direction so you know it could really be any part of the map um i believe at some point either in this episode or the next one we end up checking out basically everything in in the immediate area and we don't see anything like where I'm gesturing with the mouse now so I believe if we end up finding whatever they were referencing it'll probably be over in the east where Soulswield is right there sort of northeast of Hermanshof and west of Brunstad so we've decided to first stop off in Otterndorf and uh, they're gonna have some work for us they have two jobs uh, both two skull and then it doesn't look like there's anything in the market that we want. Uh, we are going to take a peek at the potential hires because we are still looking for a tailor if we can find one. Um, and then we've got the generic two skull mission here for about a thousand crowns. And then he's willing to haggle it up to 11. And we're hunting down beasts, which is a pretty straightforward job for us. Um, and then this one is a patrol mission where we get paid a little bit up front and then 60 crowns per head. Uh, for every head we bring back up to 25 of them. And it looks like uh, he's not willing to budge when we try to haggle with him. So we're kind of stuck accepting that. But it's actually a pretty nice little mission there because those three um, settlements are all very, very close together. We're in Otterndorf now. And it basically just requires us to head south to Lutendock there and then west to Tiefenstad and then back. So actually, as patrol missions go, that one is probably the best that I've seen. But since we're in the area... Um, we're going to go ahead and do the, uh, the beast one first, hunting down whatever these beasts are. And as you guys will see, this ends up being, uh, quite the interesting little fight here. <clears throat> so, we see a party of 14 Nox heirs, and, uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our guys are properly equipped. We leave Vlad in, because he... 
he's only missing melee defensive initiative, neither of which is going to be extremely critical for him. But with Mieszko, he's down a little bit of hit points. And uh, considering that he can end up taking damage being out on that flank, sort of, what we decide to do is give um, Arn a little bit of uh, combat experience. Not, not hack on Arn, there we go. So we decide to throw him in. Uh, we'll give him a little bit better armor and all of Mieszko's weapons. Just so we can start leveling him up because he does have potential to be a very good character in that role. So if uh, Alexander or Mieszko were ever to fall, he would be a great person to just step right in there. And so if we already have him at a decent level, there would be, you know, basically nothing lost if that were to happen. And then we go ahead and engage. Okay, so immediately we see one of the big guys and four little guys. Um, because there is so numerous, we have to be extremely careful here. Um, there's going to be a lot of corpses on the ground. And if they're allowed access to any of them, things could get out of hand really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, their numbers are pretty ridiculous. And as we'll see, they get more ridiculous. So I think every one that comes on screen from now on is going to be a, a middle tier one. So it's like, oh, oh boy, yeah. And then the big guy, who decides to pick on one of our flanks. So that makes it even more interesting. Because uh, generally, when you're dealing with those guys, you want them to attack your middle. Because then you can focus the most fire on them. If they go after a flank, um, it's difficult to you know allocate enough damage to them to uh, put them down before they become a threat. Also, he's taking cover pretty intelligently behind that tree. And so I think here we end up giving up and shooting the, uh, the more exposed little guys. But as you guys know, I don't like killing the little guys. Uh, when they're at range like that, I prefer to um, I prefer to just wound them until they get into melee range. That way, their corpses aren't scattered at a distance where I can't prevent other Nox errors from consuming them. Here, I'm sort of lamenting the fact that I uh, wasted a turn before I moved forward because I would have liked to advance and occupy that high ground. Um, I think I end up just forgetting about it and oh actually no okay so I do end up advancing slightly um, but unfortunately we do have one guy who basically used up his whole turn so he can't advance with us but because the spearmen can advance um, it's it's enough to basically ensure that they can't get past us uh, because you know the way the the spear wall attack zones interlock it covers, you know, everything, assuming they, they can't hop over it. And even then, they would still be landing in one of our attack zones. There, you can see I'm avoiding attacking the little guy and killing him somewhere where, you know, his corpse could be consumed easily. And then, with my backline guys, I decide to throw Vlad up on the high ground and start taking some shots. We do kill him in a pretty inopportune position there. But there's not a lot I can do about that. Um, it, he was one-shotted, so it's not like I could have, you know, done anything there other than just not attacked him. And that guy breaches our spear wall in the first try. I think there I'm cursing Sinric for, for failing so miserably. Um, otherwise, our spear wall tends to be working pretty well. We basically broke the morale of one of them, and uh, the other one is ready to bleed out. Um, dealing severe wounds to basically every person that we hit. That one gets killed right in front of Merrick. Um, and then a big guy jumps on top of him. And then they pretty much decide to start diverting most of their strength to the, uh, the left flank or the upper flank. The big guy takes one hit and then gets through on the second. So you can see Merrick there is in a pretty rough spot already. Um, Jorah's only got one target, so he's going to, you know, stab him. Arn is uh, going to continue firing his crossbow. Because there's really nobody in melee range for him yet. Alexander is going to switch to his axe, step forward, and take a shot at the big guy. And he misses big time, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Then we're going to continue to try to focus on just whoever's in that area that we can hit. We obviously uh, don't get too lucky there. And then Alfred misses on his uh, skirmishing attempt there. Bram 
manages to land one hit, but not the second. And then Callie has to swap weapons now that he's engaged in melee combat. Uh, he's going to miss as well. So we're having a pretty rough time up on that left flank. Um, Sinric is engaged, so he's going to kill one of them and then spear wall again to protect that corpse. Merrick is just going to defend himself and then try to hit the big guy. Uh, Vlad's going to target one of the medium guys and actually land a pretty good hit make him uh, turn back for a little bit. These guys do route very easily and then uh, return to combat fairly commonly, so um, just because you've routed them doesn't mean they're going to stay routed. And then that little guy consumes a uh, corpse and becomes a big guy. This guy is going to flee as well. So we've got them down to 10. We've whittled their numbers down pretty well. But uh, as you'll see, that tends, that doesn't really help us all that much. Uh, he's going to consume a corpse and turn into a big guy. Merrick gets swallowed. And so we've immediately got to focus all of our attention on that. Because if we don't kill that Noxair um, within like a turn or so, he's going to consume Merrick completely and uh, kill him. Arn's going to get a little bit closer and then completely miss his shot there. We're going to basically prioritize everything that we can on that big guy. Um, Alexander and uh, Christopher both land a hit there. Um, I think I'm trying to figure out ways of getting more people to that area, but because because there's so many Nox errors left, we can't really maneuver all that well. Callie's going to attack the other one a couple of times. Pretty desperately, because there's no reason for him to block. He, he's just going to get swallowed whole. Um, so, you know, he doesn't need to, like, try to defend himself. The shield's not going to help with that. Bram is going to take his weapon out and then advance to help deny them some uh, more corpses and then help with that general area. Uh, let's see. Vlad lands a pretty nice hit there, and Sinric is actually going to get a kill here. That does push a corpse back, though out of our defensive area and then that guy tries to flee and Bram smashes him. So now we have three big guys on the field and uh, one of them still has one of our guys in his uh, in his mouth and or stomach and then there goes another. So now we've got two big guys that we need to prioritize here. Um, he's going to advance and take a swipe at Alexander and miss. Um, Alexander's nearly going to kill him there but he doesn't quite make it. Christopher is going to finish him off and save Merrick and then take another shot to damage the other guy uh, who's consumed Kali. Alfred's finally going to join the melee, or at least uh, attempt to. I think we're going to end up like circling the wagon here and start surrounding the big guys and sort of ignoring the little guys because they're, they're currently routing. They will come back into the fight, but um, they are wounded, so even if they do come back into the fight they're not really a threat. Um, trying to figure out what to do with Jacques there. I think I end up leaving him behind to sort of be the guy who's going to deal with those guys when they advance back toward us. And then I consider attacking here, and I think I end up holding my ground instead. Yeah, what I have them do is I basically just have Merrick spear wall so that they have to come engage me against the spear Bram is still vulnerable, however, so that's not going to help us completely. And then, you know, everybody who can is going to continue to prioritize the guy with uh, one of our soldiers in his in his stomach. So he's going to come back. Um, I don't think any of them get away. I'm pretty sure we get them all. Jura has to move in order to attack, so unfortunately he wastes his entire turn. And then Bram is uh, going to move... I don't think he's going to move there because that would obviously get him stuck in combat. I hope I don't make that move. I'm pretty sure I don't. Yeah, okay. I was like, please don't do that. Alright, so the little guy steps in and that's a nice little uh, reprieve from us because we'd rather be fighting him than the big guy. He's going to jump into the center there and the spear wall will keep him away once but not the second time. Arn is just going to fire into the crowd and unfortunately he misses again. This guy's going to swipe at Merrick with no luck. Um, when they're attacking rather than you know consuming people, they're actually not that much of a threat. It's the eating people and taking guys off the battlefield that makes them dangerous. 
Um, Christopher can't do anything because he's technically in melee, so he's going to swap weapons and end his turn. Bram has a couple of targets here, so he's going to go for a headshot there and then a regular shot on the medium tier guy. And then Casper needs to circle around in order to join the fight. Merrick is going to uh, try to kill that guy there. and He lands both hits, but he doesn't do quite enough damage. Jacques is going to advance the other way and start circling back around to the other side. Meanwhile, Vlad tries to target the, the one guy and hits the other. He continues to flee, and the other guy comes back. So let's see, we get another medium one there, and then he goes for a corpse. So basically, we have to kill him. Then we get another big guy. And so this is pretty much a nightmare situation in dealing with the Nox Uh We get another guy consumed here. Um, it looks like... Uh, Arn landed that shot, but it wasn't enough to kill him. And then we get two big misses there. So at this point, I'm pretty nervous because uh, it looks like Kali is going to get uh, eaten here. We're doing everything we can to put hits on him. Finally, Merrick, I think, will finish him off. Oh, no. So he misses twice there, and uh, Bram's got a pretty rough spot because he's got... Basically, one guy who could potentially swallow him, and another guy that's going to attack him. Jacques is going to abandon the, the guy that fled and just join the fight. Uh, unfortunately, he gets stuck in the medium guy's combat zone there. And then Vlad, I think, is going to bail us out. Nope, he hits the other guy, but that's fine. They're both a priority at this point. And then uh, the little guy there ends up eating a corpse. Jorah is going to save Kali finally. Um, he's going to attack rather than eat somebody, which is a strange move for them. Arn's going to step up to the high ground to get his pike out so that he can engage this medium guy. Christopher is going to land a big hit on the big guy, but not enough to kill him. Hopefully Alexander can do the rest. Actually, he's going to go for the other guy there because there's a lot more people that can attack this one. And so Alfred manages to save Sinric. Casper is going to encircle these two, and now it's just a matter of dealing as much damage as quickly as we can. Merrick has to sort of rotate around so that he can engage. Jacques got uh, this guy from behind. Vlad doesn't really have any targets because of where he is. We're going to take a risky shot there, and we ended up landing it. And then Bram is going to land a pretty nice hit as well. Um, let's see. So the medium guys are swiping at us, but at this point they're not really a threat. The big threat is the big guy who's basically dead here. And then Jorah, of course, finishes him off. Uh, Arn's going to land a nice hit on that guy. And Christopher has to pass his turn because he's sort of stuck behind the line right now where he can't engage. Kali's going to look for some revenge here and go after this one. Unfortunately, he misses. And uh, Alfred's going to move in to engage this guy. And lands a pretty nice hit, but not enough to kill again. Casper, same thing. Um, Merrick, unfortunately, got his spot blocked, so he's got to move even further to engage. And Sinric doesn't really have anywhere to go either. So at this point, we're trying to maneuver around these trees. Um, but Jacques finally kills that guy, and I think Vlad gets the, the other one there. So then it's just a matter of dealing with the final uh, first tier guy that fled. And I don't recall whether or not he gets away. The enemy retreats. Yeah, I think we just let it be. So that was a pretty intense fight, but all things considered, it ended up going really, really well. We didn't take any significant wounds, only a couple light wounds. Um, only a few guys actually took any HP damage. Uh, Alfred got the worst of it, but otherwise I think it went really, really well. Um, Casper and Kali both leveled up. Unfortunately, though, uh, Arn did not. He didn't have a huge uh, role in that fight, despite taking a little bit of damage. But it, it certainly could have gone a lot worse. That is pretty much the worst thing that can happen when you're fighting Nox Airs, and it happened to us there. And we were lucky enough to pull through without losing anybody. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly could have gone a lot worse. And I certainly could have made it go a lot better. Um, if I, you know, denied territory better. And then we're going to basically sell off 
some of the uh, loot that we picked up here, all the teeth. Uh, you can craft antidotes with those if you have a witch hunter, but I don't, and they're expensive, so no reason to keep them around. And then we're going to grab the um, the other mission right after some level ups. So with Kali here, I think we end up going with uh, HP and Fatigue and Melee Defense. And then we go with Shield Expert because that's pretty much a no-brainer. And then with Casper, uh, we're obviously going to go Student with him because it's his first level up. And then I think we're going to go with Resolve. And then I want to say melee defense and HP. Because that's a pretty bad fatigue roll. I think that's the worst fatigue roll you can get. Is a two. So we take all the fours, basically. But that's kind of an issue with him. Um, his fatigue is really, really bad. He can only spear wall once before he's too tired to do it again. And so we kind of need to... You know, get his fatigue up. But if he keeps rolling bad like that, it's kind of hard to justify wasting points. Or wasting level ups on uh, fatigue. And so we'll grab that other mission. And we have to patrol down to loot and dock. Which uh, isn't too much trouble there. Obviously it's like right down the road. And they kind of jump out at me. Gives me a little bit of a scare there. I hit the pause button just to make sure it's not like orcs running at me. And then um, they've got work but we obviously can't accept it. So we'll basically pop into the marketplace. See what they've got. Um, which isn't much and I think we'll take a look at the potential hires just to make sure there isn't a tailor there and there isn't so we'll pretty much be on our way here so the longer journey is to Tiefenstadt and we have to you know go across the water for a portion of it all right so some orc scouts jump out on uh, at us on the road here and uh, there's seven or actually is there seven I can't read that number, but I think it's seven orc young, and um, they should count toward our head count, so I, I'm pretty pleased with that. That'll net us, um, let's see, 60 times seven is going to be 420 crowns right there, not too bad. And uh, this is only, you know, day one of this mission, so we can potentially um, completely fill out that 25 if we're lucky. So I think we end up deciding that we're going to fight that in the next episode because this one is, you know, sort of out of time. But uh, yeah, so I'll end it here and you guys can expect a pretty good fight next episode. I think two pretty good fights, actually. But uh, anyways, you know, hope you guys are OK with the uh, post commentary. It seemed like in the comments of the last video, you guys were totally fine with it. Um, some of you seem to actually enjoy it, but I, I actually like playing the game and doing the commentary at the same time. I have more control over what's happening. It's easier for me to like stop and explain something if I need to. Um, also, it's kind of boring just to sit here and talk about the game rather than actually playing it. But um, as I said, I'll do post commentary for the next video as well. And then we should be, um, that'll be all the episodes that you know had that issue. And then it'll be back to you know regular stuff. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Battle Brothers with you. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.